Okay. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll get started now. So I'd just like to thank everyone for uh, for coming here tonight to the Innisfil Traffic Calming Pro uh, Project Public Open House number two. So this is our, our second one and we're very happy to have you all here today. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, the Traffic Calming Project to uh, give you an update on where the project is and what the outcomes of the project are. Uh, so I'd like to hand it over to uh, Carolina Catello and she's going to say a few words from the town. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Carolina Cotillo, um, Capital Planning Engineering Associate with the Capital Engineering Department uh, here at the Town of Innisfil. Um, we're very excited to have you all here tonight. I know we have uh, some members of the public, we've got some members of council, and we've got some former members of our School Zone Traffic Safety Advisory Committee here today. So I'd like to welcome all of you. Uh, thank you for all the input that everyone's been giving us over the course of this project. And um, we're very excited today to present you with uh, some of our results and some of our next directions. So I think uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun and very interesting for everybody. Um, I'd also like to thank Jessica Jenkins, Capital Engineering Leader, and Leo Deloitte, Director of Growth, who have both been absolutely instrumental in making this project successful. Okay, thanks, Carolina. Um, so I'd just like to introduce um, our project team. Uh, we have with us here tonight, uh, Greg Kent, who's the, the project manager from, from EXP. Uh, Peter Lougheed, um, he'll be doing the uh, most of the speaking tonight, or one of our traffic uh, experts. Uh, Yassine Benani, uh, he's one of our technical specialists. And myself, my name is Jean-Louis Gadet. I'm uh, helping with the stakeholder consultation and I'll be moderating our, our session tonight. So we just wanted to go over briefly our agenda for, for tonight. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, traffic calming in Innisfil, what is the current situation and approach. Um, and then we're gonna talk about um, our approach to this project. We're gonna talk a bit about the, the pilot projects that took place as part of this project. Some of you may have seen them or driven through them or, or, or heard about them. Then we're gonna talk about the, uh, the outcomes of this traffic calming project. What were the, the results and findings of, of the project and what is going to be what is going to be happening as a result of this project. Then we're going to talk a bit about our next steps to, to finish off this project and move things along to the, the next uh, phase of, of traffic calming in Innisfil. And then we'll have some questions and answers um, about the project. So if you have uh, questions tonight, what we're going to do is um, there is a chat uh, window. Um, we'd invite you to submit your questions that way to um, to questions. Um, if you click on the drop down, you'll see questions and a question mark. Um, you can send your questions on to that person in the chat. We'll view them and we'll, we'll, we'll answer the questions toward the end of the session. Um, and at the end of the session, we'll have a, uh, some time hopefully for, um, so for, for some live questions. And if, so if you have anything there, we can, we can speak about those questions there. But that is how we'll be taking the questions and that way we'll be able to document them and, and record them as well. Um, so now I'd like to mention uh, or bring on Peter Lougheed. Uh, he's our traffic engineer and he's going to talk uh, to you about traffic calming. Well, Peter, I think you're on mute. Got it. Hello, go. everyone. So my name again is uh, Peter Lahey, and I'll just be running through some of these concepts with you. Um, I think the words that are being thrown around for the last year about this project and, and your neighborhood has been about traffic calming. So I just want to give you a little primer on the, the concept that we're dealing with. So mainly traffic calming is achieved through physical measures uh, that you would uh, be familiar with, speed bumps and so on. Uh, but there's other uh, measures such as uh, educational campaigns and uh, law enforcement and so on that also come into play. But for this project, the focus was on uh, physical measures. And the main uh, objectives when you're deploying these measures is to reduce the negative effects of motor vehicle use. And, by, and to do so, you have to get into the head of the driver and alter the driver behavior. So overall, what the results were hoping for is to, uh, with applying traffic calming is improving conditions for vulnerable street users, such as pedestrians, cyclists, and mobility impaired. So here's a little scattering of different objectives that come from the traffic calming concept, and I'll just kind of briefly go through them. 
Obviously, the main objective is to slow vehicles down, and uh, that's what we tried to do with this study. Uh, again, it's also to increase safety for vulnerable users. It's also to enhance the street environment, and, and part of that could be speed, uh, uh, noise management. Uh, a lot of times when you have high speed, you have a lot of noise in the uh, neighborhood. Also to increase access for all traffic modes, such as cyclists and so on. Um, a big component that people don't think of right away is to reduce co collision frequency and severity where vehicles are going too fast and hitting fixed objects or each other or pedestrians and so on. So that's a big, big b benefit of traffic calming is uh, safety overall. Um, the other is to reduce the need for police enforcement. Police officers can't be at a location 24 seven and they can't be at every location throughout your community. So by putting in a proper traffic calming measure plan, hopefully you're reducing the need for this. And also just a final note is, um, and I think you all know this, is when you have a, say a busy intersection and you have the roads that are coming in, sometimes people cut across on local roads. And sometimes when traffic calming measures are put in place, the, the uh, objective there is to reduce the attractiveness of taking those roadways. Okay. So when we did our background study, we found over 40 different examples of um, traffic calming measures, different things that you could apply. And they went into about seven different categories. And we're just gonna give you some examples here, most of which you're familiar with. So uh, raised crosswalk usually is at a designated crossing for pedestrians and cyclists. So it kind of pr provides a speed bump, but at the same time, pedestrians or cyclists going over this are raised up higher off the surface so they become more visible. So you got a, a safety benefit there as well. We'll talk about that application with the pilot study. Then we have something more familiar with speed humps and you can see the ones that we're showing in the image there actually have cutouts in them so that emergency vehicles can go over them without having to go up and over the bumps and also that motorcyclists could go through them as well without going up and over the bump. The third uh, example there is pavement markings. And in this case, it's uh, an image of the speed limit being painted on the ground. And uh, you could do, there's different applications like this. One is that you'd have this artistic way of putting paint down so that when you're driving, uh, it looks like a child or somebody is in front of you on the road. So there's different methodologies you can do. And again, this will come up again when we talk about uh, the pilot studies. So this concept of traffic circles is a lot of people use the words roundabouts and traffic circles and rotaries all as if they're one thing. But in this case, traffic circles are a bit different than uh, roundabouts that you're used to. In this case, this is an image of a downtown area, a historic area where there wasn't a lot of room to make changes to the geometry of the intersection. So what they did is they put an island in the middle and really all it's doing is causing drivers to slow down as they veer around the island. The median island you see in the middle bottom is part of the overall concept of road diet, where you may have a wide pavement surface and it's conducive to drivers driving very fast. So what you wanna do is you wanna reduce the lane widths, you wanna make it a little bit enclosed so a driver doesn't feel as comfortable driving fast. And the last uh, example here is enforcement. So here's a, an actual camera that's taking uh, speed readings from people traveling by and could easily be sending off tickets in the mail. Okay, so we'll switch gears a little bit here. This is right, right now is where we started off with the Innisfil traffic calming process. There is a process in place. There is a policy in place. So for this process, you can see the step-by-step -step levels here. I'm just gonna stop for a sec. So all of these are initiated in, presently with a request coming in from the public. So you go through different means uh, communicating with the town. You put in your request. It is then reviewed by the staff. And when they decide you know, what, how they're gonna handle it, the first thing they do usually is get some data, speed data, complaint data, uh, traffic data. Uh, one of the problems with the existing policy is once it gets to this point, there's certain warrants that have to be met for a measure to go further in the process and, and uh, like a bottleneck and most are not making it through. So that's what part of why the, the town wants us to help them make some changes to that policy so that they get more of a flow of uh, through this step process. So then the next step would be when they look at the data, they have to look at it first to see if there is a problem and what kind of problem it is. And then they would come up with recommendations to the council on what could be done about it. And then the last step is implementation is once the budget is set and the council has agreed to the measure, uh, you go ahead and implement it. Uh, just want to mention at the bottom there, 
that process and the, the step process is kind of a reactive uh, methodology where people have to come in first and make a complaint. But the town is also doing proactive traffic calming measures. And uh, that includes um, some speed bumps and also some uh, signs that are picking up people speeding and then mailing off warnings to them. Just want to mention that they are doing proactive measures now. Go ahead. Okay, so with our project that we were hired to do, um, we had several main goals. And the, the biggest goal was to improve community safety for those living and visiting the town. And the primary way of doing that was to hopefully reduce speeds and give the town a plan to move forward doing this. So as our objectives from that goal, we had to de develop a 10 year traffic calming strategy, which will be very proactive. We'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, we also did a full review uh, of policies all over North America and around the world of how they handle dealing with uh, traffic calming. And we, from that, we are recommending uh, updates to the policy for the town to consider. And also uh, uh, we're preparing or have prepared a traffic calming design guide. And really that's the science of the whole traffic calming uh, application. So what that's gonna have in the end is a blend of proven, best proven technologies and also some new forward thinking technologies that are just starting to be used now. And also uh, a strategy on how they can implement these traffic uh, calming measures in their community streets. Okay, so we have the, the three main deliverables here in this pie chart. You've got your traffic calming design guide, you've got your 10 year plan, and you've got your updates to traffic calming policy. And you'll have to forgive me that you're gonna hear these again. But what we're showing you here is all the different inputs and different people that are involved in this process. So starting on the left, you have your tech, uh, technical advisory committee who we've met with several times and we'll be meeting with again. We have this, our second public open house to get information out to the public and get some of their responses. You have the Get Involved Innisfil website and other campaigns that have online surveys and mapping. We also on the right hand side had a lot of background re uh, review of data and doing analysis, the, the actual math of the science. We also went deep into the best practice research. Like I said, we came up with over 40 potential measures that could be used. And then of course we have the, the pilot projects that we're gonna talk about. So the traffic calming pilot projects, actually there was three different locations that we, we uh, used for this experiment. They were conducted from August 26th to October 11th of this year. So the three se uh, segments of road that we uh, focused on were a section of Shoreacre Drive, a section of Bel Air Beach Road, and a section of Maple Road. And you can see over on the map on the right-hand side exactly where those locations were. And so we had our locations and then we went ahead and picked the traffic calming measures, a variety of them, and started to apply them. Okay, thanks for that, Peter. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do um, as we go through this presentation is we have some, some polls. We want to hear, hear from you um, and get some, uh, some opinion and thoughts. So the, the polls we're going to do are, are relating to the, uh, the pilot projects. So the way the polls will work is when I launch the poll, um, the poll, it'll look like this, will appear in the center of your screen um, and you'll be able to select the appropriate responses. Um, we just want you to know as well that the individual results um, can't be seen by others. So, so it'll be everything, all the results will be aggregated and uh, you can only vote once per question. So there's no, uh, there's no loading up on answers. Um, so when the, when the poll window comes up, and this is one from the first open house, you can click your answer and then click on the submit button and you'll be able to submit. So um, we're just going to move on to our our first poll here. And let me see, we're going to launch. Okay, so um, hopefully you can all see the, the poll. Um, so the poll, we're at, the question we're asking is, um, did, did you drive through any of the pilot areas while the pilot was on? And you can select all that apply. So we're wondering if you drove through the Shore Acres Drive location um, the Bel Air Beach Road location and the, the Maple Road location, or if you if you didn't. Um, Peter, can you just remind people briefly while people select their answers, what were at the yep. three locations? Yep, so Shoreacre Drive was the painting, the painting of the speed limit on the roadway. 
Uh, Bel Air Beach Road, and we're gonna talk about this in the next slides, but Bel Air Beach Road was where we did the chicanes and Maple Road is where we did the raised pedestrian crossing. We did speed cushions and we did the, the delineation and center line, uh, double center line uh, markings. Okay, thanks, Peter. All right, so we'll just give you a couple more seconds and three, two, one. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Yeah, so this um, is good. This means that people have been around during this. They probably were curious as people, you know, as it was mentioned, uh, back and forth that things were happening on this road or the other road. It looks like, you know, we had people go to all four, all three locations, which is a big deal because now we're talking about those locations in the next couple of slides. Right. Um, okay, so we're just gonna move on to poll number two. Okay, so in the next poll, um, let me see, poll two. Okay, so um, now that you've learned a bit about traffic calming, um, and you, some of you have had the experience with the uh, with the, the the pilot projects, would you support traffic calming measures on your street if you felt that they would be effective? So you want to get a sense of, of just you know, would would you be okay with having them on your street? Um, so we'll give you uh, another five, four, three two, one, all right, and- let's... Well, these are these are obviously great results. This is showing that the town and the community itself is, is open to this. Just one sec, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> okay, we'll just give Peter a moment there. Um, yes, yeah, so we see most of the people who are um, here tonight um, Got we'll it. Sorry. Okay with, that's okay. No, it's really good. This is actually really good because now this is people that have seen the pilot studies and they've and they've driven through these sections where traffic calming measures have been applied, and they're still very optimistic that they could use these on their roads and get positive effects. So this is a good uh, kind of vote of confidence for the pilot studies as well. Okay. All right. Thanks, Peter. Um, okay. So I guess after that, we'll move on and we're gonna talk a bit more about the pilots. So is that, okay, I've got to turn that screen that off, right? Okay. So we're going right into the actual pilot sections now. And the first one, as I said, was Shore Acres Drive. And you can actually see on the upper left-hand corner, the pavement markings that were put down. There was three done on either side of the road. So the vehicles going eastbound and westbound would still be uh, seeing these signs. Um, you know, if, if you go to the next slide here, JL, uh, by themselves, what we found is they didn't produce a significant speed reduction, at least during the week. There was a little bit on the weekends. So from that, uh, what we had to be fair to the measure was that it was done by itself. And we, and what we said was, you know, even though these, uh, didn't show a positive result in this pilot study, they could be used later on in com combination with other measures. And that's, that's a big theme uh, going through the rest of this uh, project was it may not be one thing alone that does the trick. It may be a combination. So now you have the chicanes that uh, were put in place on Bel Air Beach Road. So there was three on either side and they were done in a what's called a repetitive horizontal deflection. And the idea is, is that essentially you're, you're veering the center line back and forth around objects and that that movement back and forth for drivers was meant to make them feel uncomfortable going fast and therefore slowing down. Uh, in this case, we started with planters and barrier curb and you can see there's delineators involved and object markers as well. So in this case, we found uh, that there was minimal speed reduction occurring during weekdays and weekends. And to be fair to the measure, the road was not very wide and we took we did the best that we could with this, but as you can see in the image, we weren't able to uh, deflect the center line very much. So we really weren't changing people's pathways very much and therefore they're not going, they weren't going much slower. But um, as I show, as you'll see in the next slide, there are other situations where uh, around North America here and Europe where they have put in more drastic measures to get a greater deflection of the center line and have much better results. And actually the, the, the right-hand image they, they, even though it's two lane traffic, two way traffic, 
they restrict it to one way at a time. So obviously you're gonna have a great deal of speed reduction there. So to be fair, you know, we did what we could with the pilot study, but we didn't throw this out moving forward for the town. So then we had uh, Maple Road, which was our most extensive pilot study. We actually had several different measures here in place. Um, again, talking about lane narrowing, we did this for the entire length. And the way that you do that, or we did it in this case, was by doubling the center line, you end up taking up more of the travel lane, making the lanes narrower and again, more uh, less comfortable for drivers to drive at high speeds. We also delineated the bike lane that existed there already with pavement marking and delineators. Also, first of all, helping the bikers to be delineated and protected, but also it adds another side to the lane that again, drivers feel like they're being congested a little bit and slowed down. Um, we put uh, speed cushions at either end, kind of like a gateway treatment of you're coming into a, a slow driving zone. Um, so these were cushions, not as drastic as humps, and they were, they were designed to allow uh, emergency vehicles to pass over and motorcycles to pass over. And then the final one, we'll show better images of it here in a minute, but that's the raised crosswalk at Spooners Road, where we formalized a pedestrian crossing. There had been people uh, going back and forth across the road, pedestrians in different areas, and it was kind of a safety hazard. So it was an opportunity to not only put in a traffic calming measure of the, uh, the raised crosswalk itself, but also to filter uh, people, uh, funnel people into this crossing and making them more safe and also raising them up off the surface a bit so they're more visible. So just to go, you know, we're just, I'm just going back over what I said. So at either end, this is what it looks like the speed cushions and, and, and looks like most of you drove on these sections over the last couple of months. So the idea here is that the average vehicle would have to slow down a bit to go over the speed cushions while allowing room for the emergency vehicles to cross over without being deflected. And then you can see in the middle, the concept of basically it's a road diet or lane narrowing. So that, that was at, when we started, that was just a single center line, yellow center line. So you can see what was added was a second center line and also the lines on the side for the bike lane. Just as an interesting side note, um, there had been quite a few people actually parking in the bike lane up to that point. And I think the town reported that once these uh, delineators were put in place and the, the lines, there's a lot less of that, which again is a, a benefit to safety and, and to pedestrians and cyclists. So we did that, not only did we put the lines in, but we put delineators in for an extra aspect, especially at nighttime, where drivers could see that uh, visually that there was a separation and uh, overall, the lane widths were much narrower than they were before. Uh, as I said, at Spooners Road, we put in a pedestrian raised crossing. So first it had to be a formalized as a pedestrian crossing with the appropriate PXO signage and so on. And then we took another step and raised it on a platform like you can see. So uh, in the end, you, uh, you've slowed people down, but you've also uh, made the pedestrians crossing the road much safer. So the results of this were very encouraging. We actually had a significant reduction in speeds that we were able to prove scientifically and statistically was going on on that section of roadway. And um, you know, we were getting feedback from users of the roadway that, uh, that the vulnerable users were getting more protection with the raised crosswalk and with the delineated uh, cyclist lane. And here's an example where many measures were used on a single stretch of road and we know there was a positive effect. We don't necessarily know one piece was more effective than the other, but we did prove that using them in combination is where you're gonna maximize your effectiveness. So kind of parallel to the study itself and the results, there was an online survey conducted by this, the town to see how pedestrians were reacting to the pilot study. You can see the basic results below uh, they're divided by measure. And what we've got in the dark green is strong support. In the light green, we have somewhat support. And we, if you put these together, go along and look at the greens all together, but there's a great deal of support by the public with uh, uh, speed cushions and the two or more measures being the, the favorites. And that would be Maple Road would be the, where that was done. But it's a really good indication that the public is, as we saw in the poll, the people are interested in trying these things and hoping that they work out. 
So the end result, uh, what were our findings of the pilot projects? So we did feel that we proved, or the town proved that traffic calming measures can be successfully deployed within the town. These are your results. This was your experiment. You'll have other communities later on coming in and looking at this and knowing it was the Innisfil town uh, experiment that was done. Uh, we sometimes the results were there was no uh, positive benefits and that's a result as well. Um, so really what we're saying is that the results of this can help guide the town moving forward with the other deliverables that we're like the design guide and the policy changes uh, that the pilot project will help give some backing to that and help the town overall move forward uh, with some of their own information and uh, have a more proactive and effective traffic calming measure policy. So here again, as I said, repeats a little bit because these are the big things that we were trying to finish with. And the first one is the traffic calming design guide. Uh, the second is the 10 year traffic calming program. And the third is updates to the traffic calming policy. So the traffic calming design guide uh, does exactly that. It provides all the different options that the town could use for traffic calming. It gives the appropriate uh, locations for them, the proper ways to install them, potential costs, and uh, in the end, we gave some recommendations as well about which ones we thought were most effective. And some of that came from the pilot study. Um, the other is that when you're moving forward in new communities, if you're gonna open a new subdivision or so, so on, there may be, uh, I showed you the little traffic, uh, um, traffic circle. That may be something that is used in the future in new developments. So you don't, you don't know if there's a problem or not. You're not reacting to a problem, but proactively, they could be put in place to prevent that from starting. And uh, so the bottom line, what we were giving the town with that document is a toolbox that they can reference at any time and look up, we have a problem. What's the kind of measure that could be appropriate here? Uh, what is the, could be the out outcomes of that? And then some potential costs. So with the 10 year calming pro traffic calming program, what, we, what this is, is a more proactive approach to implementing traffic calming. So you're not ne necessarily waiting for something to happen, that somebody tells the town that somebody's speeding or the uh, law enforcement comes back and say, we gave a lot of tickets out the other day. This is where they can move forward proactively and identify locations where traffic calming measures will be useful now and in the future. And so what that involved was a, a, a GIS program, basically a ge geometric program for the, of the town and populating it with data like traffic data, uh, speed data, uh, collision data, and so on. And through the process, it works the way down to what, you, what locations could be best served by using traffic calming measures. And so they were also prioritized so that uh, in this case, we end up with 15 for the first three years. So we, we had more than that. There were many, many more locations that showed up in the process, but what the town needed was to know where the money could be best spent each year. And that's the purpose of this document. So the final deliverable, is, as I mentioned, was uh, updates to the traffic common policy. So the town has a policy right now and it's, it's comparable to others in other communities. Uh, all we're doing is trying to update it, make it a little bit more uh, applicable, make it a little bit more useful, and it will be based on all of the other deliverables. So the traffic design guide, the tenure program, our research of other communities with best practices, and of course, the pilot studies. So now that what that gives the town is a twin approach. You've got a by request approach and you've got a proactive approach. And both can be going on at the same time. So, so this is not to stop anybody from sending an email to the town and saying, I think they're speeding on my road. The system will be there and it's hopefully improved that will get you, you know, will get better results uh, for the town. But at the same time, doing this traffic 10-year uh, plan, and that would, could be 20 years moving forward. And that's taking, you see the little magnifying glass, that's taking a bunch of data that is available or they may have to collect. Like they... Some of the data uh, doesn't stay fresh for very many years, so they may have to go out and do more speed counts and more traffic counts and so on. So that's what we are giving them in that 10-year plan is how do you keep it going and keeping it uh, relevant? So that's what you end up with is your traffic calming design guide and, and your traffic calming policy supporting both of these programs.
Okay. Well, thanks, Peter, for that. Um, so we're just going to give Peter's voice a, a break before we bring him back in to uh, field some more some questions. Um, and just a reminder, as we go through the presentation, um, you can send questions in through through the chat. I see that a few of them have, have come in. Um, but now that Peter's talked to you about um, you know, the, the current situation of traffic calming in Innisfil and the pilots that we had, and also the um, you know the approach and going forward with the, the twin approach of having um, an approved approach for having traffic calming being installed through requests, but also with the 10 year program where it'll be a more proactive um, and structured approach to uh, to traffic calming in Innisfil. We want to get your thoughts on on what you um, you know what, what you feel how you feel about that approach. So you should see the uh, the poll number three popped up on your screen now. And what we want to know, you know, easy yes or no question: Do you agree with the proposed approach? Um, and you know, you may maybe you're not sure in some cases, but uh, we'd like to hear um, just if you if you agree uh, with the approach. And we can talk about this. Um, once the person presentation is concluded, we have a couple more slides. Um, but yeah, we'd like to see quickly what, what you think in a snapshot. So we'll give you a few more seconds. So five, four, put your answer in. We should have a prize for this. Three, two, one. Okay, let's see what we have. So, Dale, I mean, what we've got here with the not sure vote means there's more explanation needed. There's more information needed by the public or for the public to digest, to know if this approach is going to work. And that's when the 10 year plan comes out and the design guide comes out, uh, there'll be more information. But it, it's encouraging to see that, um, that I think what people like to know is that they're still going to be heard. It's not just going to be a computer spitting out where the traffic calming measures should go. You still can call up somebody or so on, and you can still be, that could still be the method that uh, goes forward and get in applying a traffic calming measure. So I, I think that's good that people are feeling a comfort with the, the two prong approach. Great. Well, we'll um, as we uh, open up the, 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 I guess the line for questions, um, we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how what people think and their thoughts. Um, so just to, uh, before we move on to some feeling some of the questions that we received, just to share with you some of the, the next steps in this project. Uh, so one of the first next steps will be to finalize the design guide and the 10 year trapping program. Uh, these are being finalized. Some of the comments that are received through the public open house will, will help uh, guide some of those changes. And then in uh, February, the team will be meeting with the technical advisory committee for the fourth and final meeting. And really this will be to, to do a final review of the materials that were developed uh, and also to discuss the final, uh, final report for the project. And then um, the last component of this will be to provide guidance and recommendations for updating the town's official uh, traffic calming policy. Uh, Peter, are there any uh, steps here that um, that I missed or that should be expanded on? No, I think I think the reason that we showed all of these things in a pie chart is they all move around and connect and are going to grow uh, uh, together. So the design guide doesn't stand alone. The the updates to the policy are dependent on the others. Uh, the pilot study didn't stand alone. It was the idea that all of this is kind of building a base for the town to have. Uh, moving forward, a lot of different components having been developed by uh, our by the project. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Peter. Um, so we're going to get to some questions now. Um, so some some questions have been submitted through the chat. We're going to focus the ones first on the um, uh, the ones that deal mostly with the traffic calming project. If you've asked about a specific location, uh, if, if we have time, we'll we'll get to that. Um, or we'll um, get staff to, to get back to you. Also, um, if you want to, uh, to ask a question um, through, through the Zoom, you can also uh, raise your hand and we'll, um, and we'll, uh, we'll bring you on, on board. So I'll just go into the chat here. Let's take a look at a few questions here. Okay, so one of the questions is, um, 
Um, are there different protocols for traffic calming for urban versus rural roads? So on rural roads, some traffic calming measures are detrimental to agricultural equipment being able to move to the agricultural areas to the in the town, uh, mainly due to equipment widths. Okay, so the document that we're talking about with the design guide, um, it has a, a complete uh, digestion of all the measures that are potentially uh, useful to the town, but then it has a pros and a cons column. And so it says in these situations like speed bumps, um, if that's what they're meaning, that in some situations you can't do it or in some situations they're gonna be detrimental or a negative. Um, and of course, the choosing of traffic calming measures themselves will ultimately be the town staff deciding that with help from the community. So there won't be anything put down because the computer said to do so. Every situation will be looked at individually. It's a guide, the, the 10 year plan is a guide to these locations and with suggested applications, but they still have to be installed and maintained and so on by the town. So you're, we're not taking the human element out, but it is tough in rural environments because you tend to have higher speeds. So there are, you know, in some cases, traffic calming measures are really to bring somebody down from a 70 speed down to a 50 or 60 down to a 50. But if you have a rural road where people are traveling at 100 kilometers an hour, it greatly restricts what you can use. So there's a lot of decision making still has to happen. And that's, that's why the design guide is so important. That's the library of traffic calming and how uh, all the measures that we could find there and all the different uh, components of those so that a better understanding, the town has a better understanding of what they're potentially applying. Okay, thanks Peter. Um, so we had another question. Um, so what happens to snow removal? So how do these measures um, deal with uh, snow? Well, the easy answer, it's not the complete answer, but the easy answer is most of these come out before snow. Uh, on, on Maple Road, you had the raised pedestrian crossing. That's not intended to stay there in the winter, nor is the speed cushions, nor are the delineators. You might leave things like pavement markings down, but they're not gonna, in, they're not gonna get in, uh, create an issue for the plows. That's a big deal in northern climates. That's a big deal. You don't want the, at the very first uh, snowfall to have problems with these. So um, again, the design guide addresses that and says some of these are temporary and some of these can be permanent. Okay, thanks Peter. And what you would do just to follow up on that, you don't uh, take the raised crosswalk out and throw it out. You, the idea is that you put it away for the winter and put it back out. So you're not constantly spending capital money every time to put all these things back, all these things in. Okay. Um, another question here. Um, so from the time the town decides a traffic calming is needed, what is the timeline roughly of when it would be completed? So in particular, uh, where there's large developments are being built with little uh, or no road development taking place. Well, I think Carolina should get in on that because that's more of a town policy uh, we can lay out the steps that have to be followed or should be considered, but as far as the timeline, maybe Carolina, you could comment. Yes, so I mean, I think there's sort of two parts to this question. Um, there's sort of the new development question in the sense of developments that don't exist yet at all. And there's the, the question of, you know, how are we going to deal with roads that currently exist or will exist in the very near future? Um, in the case of new development, we're hoping that between the design guide and the new revised policy that we will be able to provide um, information to developers and to those who are designing those neighborhoods uh, to ensure that we you know don't have those speeding problems starting in the first place and that they are a safe place for pedestrians bicyclists and other vulnerable users but uh, in the case of retrofits of existing roads or roads that will exist before we kind of get this program up and running um, it will be a multi-stage process that may take several years um, depending on the type of traffic calming it may be something that's very quick and easy to design or it may take some time um, we also have limitations in terms of how we procure um, contractors, et cetera. So, so there are a few things that we may be able to be, ah, this is number one on the priority list. It's very easy. It might be something we'd be able to, you know, design and build in the same year. Uh, other things would probably be, you know, design one year, build the next year. So you're looking at, you know, sort of a two year timeline on those more complicated measures. Okay, All right. Thanks, Carolina. Um, you see another question. Um, Okay, so this is about the crosswalk that was installed at uh, Maple and Spooners. Um, so will that crosswalk be reinstalled? Um, 
Carolina, did you want to, to say? I think, I think that one's for on me as well. On? <laughs> yes. So uh, we're certainly hoping uh, once we finalize the report here and finalized our, our you know, our ten-year priority list, um, that we'll have the opportunity to go back to council and ask for approval to reinstall some of the measures. Um, of course, that would you know be pending council approval and and pending confirmation that these are the most um, important or or needy. The, the locations with with high need for the particular products, but we have it, everything is safely stored and ready to be reinstalled uh, when the opportunity presents. Okay, thanks, Carolina. Um, another question here. So during the trial, some of the delineators broke um, or they broke off. Uh, so how would that be managed for repair? Um, do we talk about repair in the design guide, Peter, for maintenance? Well, uh, Carolina probably. Uh, I mean, what's standard is that something like a delineator, you would have a stock of them, you would have a supply. And then whoever reports it, whether it's the city staff or police or somebody says that one of them is broken or uh, sheared off or whatever, that there would be replacements available. So that would be one of the recommendations, obviously. And just to build on what Peter said, that's certainly how the pilot was run. Um, ideally, you know, those linears are designed to deflect when they're hit by a vehicle. So very few of them should break, but now and then one does. Um, and certainly the way that we had done the pilot was that uh, once those had broken, the contractor was able to go in and replace them. And we'd like to, you know, use a similar model going forward. Okay. Thanks, Carolina. Um, I think that, um, I think that is all the questions that I see that have come in through writing. Um, oh, did someone? I think there was another one. Um, Maybe in the no. chat. No, that was all I see. Okay. Um, and I don't see any um, any hands. I know up. that we we did have a raised hand from uh, oh, Ms. Carleen go. Doyle. Uh, good evening. Actually, I did send you a chat. Um, so. I'm just gonna have to read it, just one moment. Um, so with the pro uh, proposed um, approach question, uh, I feel personally a lot of residents still feel that our local police force uh, should be in these high-speed traffic areas monitoring these roads. Um, how are you going to convince these residents that uh, you, you or the town's um, traffic calming approach is going to be successful. Well, uh, Carolina will probably come in here too, but I, I think what one of the purposes of the pilot study was to show the town, the people in the town, that the town itself is moving forward with this and actually taking this seriously and investing money in it and doing it in a very ca careful way and hopefully effective way. And by, sh by example, you've got an example now in the last couple of months of something that the town did and it worked. Um, I don't know if you want to add more to that, Carolina. Yeah, I certainly do want to say that, um, you know, I think the pilot results do speak for themselves and that we did see statistically significant reductions in speed, um, at least at times on every road single, every road section we tested. And on the most successful section, it was a consistent large reduction in, uh, in, in operating speeds. So I think, you know, the pilots themselves show that these kinds of measures can be very effective um, in a town like Innisfil. Um, that said, I do think that, you know, there are kind of two aspects to, to speeding issues. There's sort of the systemic large scale issue that affects large numbers of people where generally operating speeds are high and that's what's addressed by this kind of traffic calming installation. And then there's the problem where you've got, you know, perhaps not large numbers, but occasional people who are, you know, traveling very quickly. And that's something where our partners in the in South Simcoe Police can really help us out uh, by helping us to target those individuals. So something like this, where it's a, you know, a large scale traffic calming installation like we saw in Maple is very effective at bringing down speeding generally, but perhaps doesn't address the individual person. Um, whereas um, police enforcement can really help uh, particularly if you can target it to a time and a place, can really help target those individual speeders, but perhaps doesn't have that same large systemic effect. So definitely both of them have to work together in tandem. Okay. I'd say, I say the one thing that the, the community needs to remember too, Carolina, is even though that we're moving forward or you're moving forward with this kind of scientific proactive method, uh, there still will be the person come in the door and has a problem and they'll be listened to, and there's a whole process to go through. They could just as well end up being an implementation of traffic calming measure. Absolutely, certainly, and, and sort of the um, 
you know, you've mentioned a couple of times that we, we still want to keep that aspect of it. And we absolutely do. Um, I see this as being kind of analogous to the way we run our road rehabilitation program, where we have a, a multi-year program set up, but because situations change and things change, we do revisit that every year and add in new locations or slide locations forward and backwards in the priority list. So um, certainly by having the public be able to come in and help us identify those problems, um, that's absolutely a great help and will absolutely help us going forward. Okay, um, thanks Carolina. Um, are there any other questions from anybody? Um, going I guess the only thing I would say, I just wanted to add because I think it's important that the, that pilot study is an Innisfil traffic calming policy study. Uh, there'll be students in the future, there'll be other communities in the future come in. You, you've done new information, you've done research yourselves. That's really, really valuable. And even if you have an answer that's no, it's not effective, that's still just as important as saying that yes, something is effective. So I just think the town should be given credit for in investing the money in that pilot study because that's, that's their experiment. So actually we have a question here. Um, so they ask, um, they say in our area, the traffic counters and speed recorders were not done in the summer. Will they be done again next summer, uh, in particular in the Shore, uh, Shore, Air, Shore Acres area? So I'm, I'm thinking the inquiry means as part of the pilot, they weren't done over the summer? Yeah, well, I think, um, yeah. Um, so it says, yeah, the traffic counters and the speed recorders were not done in the summer. So, I mean, certainly the traffic counts during the pilot were timed based on the requirements of the pilot. Um, so we kind of wanted to be able to collect data at two separate times, and Peter can probably expand on this a little bit beyond what I'm saying, but um, we essentially wanted to catch what was that immediate impact of those um, installations, and then what were those installations like after they'd been installed for some time, as generally um, some of these simpler traffic calming installations, like pavement markings in particular, um, the impact declines over time, and, and so we wanted to be able to pick that up at both of those times, and those were both timed based on when the pilots were installed. Um, certainly, that's not to say that, you know, there may not be problems at other times of the year or that speeds may not be different at the other times of the year, but that's how those times were selected. Yeah, like the locations at that point were already selected. So they were not, we were not testing to see if people were speeding. We were testing to see if we could reduce the speeds. So it was more of an experimental data collection. Um, there was never a time when we went out and put uh, speed collection all over the town and picked these three spots. We already knew those were the test spots. The data collection was strictly for the before and after of the results of the uh, of the experiment. Okay, all right, thanks, Peter. So we have actually a question from Alex, and then we'll get to uh, to you next. Um, let me see, Alex. I'm going to see if we can get you to, uh, to unmute. Um, are you able to? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear you, Alex? Okay, uh, video is not working though. Um, I did I did put a question in the chat box, and it was uh, uh, my question was concerning Leslie Street and why Leslie Street wasn't chosen since it did have some uh, serious measures to uh, reduce uh, traffic calming through bike lanes and that kind of stuff. So I'm just kind of curious why uh, that street uh, because it has an it's, it's had a ongoing issue for many years as as Carolina knows. So I'm just kind of curious in terms of why that street wasn't chosen because I thought it would have been a good one with all the all the work that you did. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. So um, there was quite quite a lot of different pieces of information went into uh, selecting the pilot locations. And again, Peter may, may want to add once I'm done. Um, we certainly looked at what we were looking for were locations that were suitable for these types of traffic calming installations, where data collection would be relatively simple and uncomplicated by other data, and where we were able to identify ahead of time that there was a speeding problem. So Leslie definitely has most of those characteristics. We know there is there is an ongoing speeding problem there. Um, but we but we can't do is kind of find the, the before state uh, because, you know, the bicycle lanes that have previously been installed there and now partially worn away do provide some traffic calming impact. Um, and it's also not an ideal location perhaps for some of these types of installations which we wanted to test. So... I, like I said, Peter could take can can probably describe it in more detail, but we did look at every segment of road in the town as a as a start, and then use multiple different criteria to then narrow it down. And then these three locations were were the top three where we knew that we could possibly get a change with a good installation that we could install the types of installations we wanted to look at, and where we knew that we could get uh, good data collection. 
Okay, thank you. So, so I would say the, uh, the experiment behind the experiment was to get that, those first three uh, locations, we had a process of taking data in and adding data in and prioritizing and, and it was based on the existing town policy of what would be all of the measures going, all of the town city locations going all through the filters and what would come out. And then we adjusted the filters of tr how many people are dry, like the volumes on the road or whatever, until we got down to a s select few. And, that, and the good thing about that experiment is in the 10 year plan, it helped us to develop that methodology for choosing things in the future. Because the e easy answer is all schools, all hospitals. You know, there's, there's an easy way to pick them, but it doesn't take into consideration all aspects, this wide variety of aspects. That's what we were testing is what would happen if you consider almost every feature of the roadway and the area around it. And so that was part of the experiment that came out of the pilot study was a methodology moving forward in the future. Would you agree, Carolina? I absolutely would agree. And I would say that for anybody who's curious about the details of the methodology, um, it certainly will appear in the final report, but if you wanna know about it now, check out our Get Involved page. Take a look on the right hand, I think, side of the page. And about halfway down, you should find something that has the uh, slides and the video from our first open house. And one of the big topics we talked about at that first open house was that methodology. So uh, if that's something you're curious about, please do check it out. Okay. All right. Thanks, uh, Carolina and Peter. Um, so yeah, so Carlene, uh, go ahead. You're able to... I believe Carlene's still muted. Yeah. Well, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I should okay. be used to this. Um, so going forward with all of this information, and I, I mean, our communication has been great as far as on uh, Facebook, on, on our town site, but um, when you just talked about schools, I'd really like to see some involvement or s some of these reports that will go feed into the schools. Um, so that parents can see that as well, because they're a big par parcel of this with their children day to day, going to schools and traveling along these roads. So when we're sending out our communication, our, you know, we should really be focusing to the schools as well. Um, you probably have already talked about that, but I think not just the town site, but all those little feeders, you know, yeah. uh, would really help us um, out, well, I would I think. Things like the... Uh driver's education program for new drivers and mm -hmm. helping them to understand uh, what these mechanisms are and why they're being put in place. Right. Um, and secondly, um, I live in a high traffic school zone area. Um, we have a lot of amazing things that have happened on our road with the shared pathways. Um, we have the Chevrons and we do have an LIDAR um, camera which I'm really curious about. Um, I know I've been on to uh, for moving that um, to, to the town um, and what kind of data output we've had come back from South Central Police on that, because I know it's still on the poll there, but I believe you probably use, utilize that as part of your uh, findings as well. But I just wanted to know, um, or can that be described to the residents of what it is? Because I don't think a lot of town people know actually it exists. Um, so that's something that I'd like to see communication uh, being put forth on that. Thank you. Thank you. So before you go, Carlene, you're thinking of our, um, the automated warning camera that we've been uh, yes. using in various school zones? Okay. Yeah. So for the group, for anyone here who is not familiar with it, I can describe it quickly and then we could certainly try to um, uh, promote it better. Um, we have started a uh, program together with uh, South Simcoe Police and with our neighbors in Bradford, West Willembury, um, where we do have an automated speed enforcement camera um, that uh, unfortunately, uh, there are some limitations in the regulations that allow you to enforce under some circumstances and not others. Um, in the sense of actually sending somebody a ticket, but you can send them a warning letter under almost any circumstance. So we've been using it to send warning letters. We have focused primarily on school zones, though we have put it at other locations, for example, at St. John's and 7th. And what happens is that if a, a vehicle goes past that camera uh, at a rate of speed, which is a certain amount above the speed limit, typically it's about 15 kilometers per hour, which would be around the range that police would normally ticket, um, they will get a warning letter from South Simcoe Police. And um, I'm not, exactly familiar with what 
uh, happened at the Ninth Line location in particular, but I can certainly look that up and get back to you, Carlene. But I do know that at other locations, um, generally what we find is, you know, uh, the number of speeders is, is pretty comparable to what we see if we were to collect data any other method. Um, so you do get a certain percentage of people speeding. Um, we have found that, for example, when we had it near Nantar Shore Secondary School, that sending warning letters was quite effective because a lot of the people who were speeding were students whose parents had lent them their cars, and getting in trouble with mom and dad uh, can be pretty effective. Um, and certainly we have found it generally to be uh, a program that's gotten really good reception and uh, one that we think has has really improved safety in some of those school zones. Absolutely. Great. Well, thanks, Carolina. Um, so I think I, we're about four minutes to eight, so we're just about to our end. So I want to thank everyone for um, for their questions tonight and their their inputs. Um, before I hand it back over to uh, to Carolina, um, first of all, I want to say thank you for to everyone for for coming tonight. Um, but also, uh, so we have a bit of time for you to get your your feedback and your comments in. Um, so there's an email address here where you can send uh, your uh, your comments in. You can also send them in through the Get Involved in Innisfil um, traffic calming strategy page. Um, and it uh, was posted in, in the chat. Um, I think if you made it to your the open house here tonight, you've probably been to the page. So if you can have your comments in by December 30th, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, maybe uh, over your Christmas dinner, you can talk about the traffic calming project and 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 how you'd uh, like to see it uh, rolled out throughout the uh, throughout the town. Um, if you have nothing else, if you don't have politics to talk about. Um, so on behalf of EXP, I want to thank everyone for uh, for coming tonight, uh, and I'll hand it over to uh, to Carolina now. So I'd like to echo Jean-Louis' thanks. Um, I would also like to encourage you to go to the Get Involved Innisfil page, getinvolvedinnisfil.ca slash TCS for traffic calming strategy. Um, we are looking forward to hearing your comments, so certainly please do provide them. Um, in terms of next steps and when you will see us again, um, this will be brought to council in the new year. Um, it will include uh, the 10-year prioritize list, so please keep your eyes open for that, and it will include basically all the information you've heard both in this and the previous open house, you know, what was the background research, how we got where we did, how we selected the pilots, what these pilots results are, you'll be able to see those statistics in detail, um, so you can gain a greater understanding of those, and uh, that should hope happen in the first quarter of 2023. So very excited to see that. Um, you will also see um, in the upcoming capital budget, this was previously approved, but it will still appear, is the Traffic Calming Strategy Implementation Project, um, which will, of course, be what allows us to actually do that 10-year uh, implementation of, of the recommended projects out of this. So we're very excited to continue with this. We're very excited to hear your comments, and we thank you for coming. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.